Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on estimating the distance using a velocity time graph. Let's read the question. The velocity time graph, or a speed time graph sometimes known as, shows the first 1.5 seconds of motion of a squirrel. By using three strips of equal width, estimate the distance travelled by the squirrel. Now hopefully you've watched a previous video where we actually calculated the exact distance travelled by something using a velocity time graph, but where we had straight lines involved. And you remember from that previous video that the area under the velocity time graph, or the speed time graph, is the distance travelled. So we need to find the area under this curve. Now if your graph involves straight lines, and it's easier, we might have a triangle or a trapezium and we know how to find the area of that. But because we've got this curve, it makes the area much harder to find. So what we do is we approximate the area under the graph by splitting it into polygons, so just shapes with straight edges. Now we're told that for the first 1.5 seconds of motion, so between the 0 second mark and the 1.5 second mark, it wants us to split it into three strips. Now 1.5, this gap here of 1.5, if you split it into 3, 1.5 divided by 3 is equal to 0.5. So each strip that we're going to draw is going to have a width of 0.5. So what we do at each mark, so 0.5, we just move up to the graph. So we're going to hit it here. And if we move up from the one mark, the next 0.5 up, we're going to hit it here. And if we go from the 1.5 mark and we go up, we're going to hit it here. And what I always then do is I write the y values, in this case the velocity, the speed, on each one. So that's going to be a height of 2. That's going to be a height of roughly 5, because it's halfway between 4 and 6. And that height seems to be 10. Now, if we connect these points, including the first one, so if we connect these points up with straight lines, so we've got a straight line like this, a straight line like this and a straight line like this, can you see that now we have nice shapes? We've got a triangle here, this is a trapezium because it's got a pair of parallel sides, and this is also a trapezium. You can also see that this is going to slightly overestimate the area and hence slightly overestimate the distance because can you see that, that trapezium is slightly bigger than the area under the curve? The, the straight line here goes above the curve so this area of the trapezium is going to be slightly bigger than what we actually have under the curve. So now we just need to find the area of each of these three things. We've got a triangle here. Well let's just label these as A, B and C just so I can do the calculation separately. Let's find the area of A first. This is just a triangle so the area is going to be half times base times height. So half times the base, which is 0.5, multiplied by the height, which we wrote on there was 2. And if we do that, that just gives us 0.5. What about the area of B? Well, B is a trapezium, so we can do the average of the parallel sides multiplied by the height between them. These here are the two parallel sides. So this side and this side are the parallel sides. So we do the average of the parallel sides so that's 2 plus 5 divided by 2. That's the average of this length and this length, the parallel sides. And then we times it by the height between them. These are two parallel sides. This will be the height between them, which in this case is a horizontal distance. We can see that's a width of 0.5. So if we put that into our calculator, we get 1.75. And finally, we've got this trapezium on the right. Again, we just do the average of the parallel sides. Well, these are the parallel sides. And we can see those lengths are 5, which we wrote on, and 10. So we do 5 plus 10 and divide by 2 to average them. And then we times it by the distance between them, which is 0.5 again. That's the width of this strip. We put that into our calculator. So 7.5 times 0.5 is 3.75. And then we just add these areas together to get the total distance, because the area under the graph is the distance. So we just do 0.5 plus 1.75 plus 3.75, if I do that on my calculator, and we get 6. And what's the unit? Well, this unit here is metres per second, so it's going to be in metres, and that's the final answer.